Vitamin C is an interesting material to work with, and what I'm going to show you at this point is a lab that can be done as a titration. Oftentimes we do titrations with things like sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, and those are common materials to use in the lab, but they're not things that students relate to very well. And so if we can find a way of showing students that there's a purpose and a plan and an application for titrations, I think that it helps them to understand that process. This lab can be done two ways. It can be done in a qualitative process where we just essentially compare the number of drops that it takes to neutralize a solution of dichloroendophenol. It's about a 0.025% solution, and the documentation on how to prepare that will accompany the video. And we're also going to be using a solution of vitamin C that has been prepared, and the vitamin C solution is a 0.1% solution. If you want to do this qualitatively, all we're going to do is just count the number of drops of different juices that it takes to change the dichloroendophenol from this dark blue color to a pale amber or a clear color, kind of, uh, colorless material. If you want to do this quantitatively, then what you would do is to do the mathematics. Again, that's in the accompanying documentation that you could look at. And with that, we would actually count the number of drops of vitamin C that it takes. I'm going to go ahead and cheat just a little bit. I've counted about the number of drops that it's going to take to change the vitamin C solution as a standard. And so we'll run up close to that point so that we can kind of get an idea of what will take place. And then we'll actually mimic the lab by using the fruit juices. So I'm going to start off and it's going to take somewhere around 30 drops. And so I'll just put these in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 25. We'll stop at 25 and we'll give it a stir. Obviously this is not how you would run the actual lab, but for the sake of time we'll run this up a little bit. We're stirring and we're still not to that clear end point that we're looking for, so a few more drops. That brings us to about 30. And we'll stop and stir for a moment. We can see that the solution is getting a bit more clear, but it's not quite where we need it. So that brings us to 35 drops and we'll stir a little more. And not quite where we need to be. That takes us to 40 drops. And at 40 drops we'll call that our end point. Now obviously if you were going to do this quantitatively, you would take much greater care with that process. But we're just trying to get an idea and then to get an indication of what that end point would be for us. So if you would put for us on the board please, that we've used 40 drops of vitamin C to neutralize the dichloroendophenol. So that's a 0.1% solution. Now what we're going to do is to use some various juices and compare their vitamin C content to the standard vitamin C that we've prepared. And we'll start off first by taking a look at some hand squeezed fresh orange juice. That should be very healthy for us. So we'll start putting the orange juice in. We've got 10 drops there. We'll stop and stir. You would want to understand that it's easiest to use uh, juices that have a fairly light color to them. Uh, tomato juice is difficult to use because it obscures the color change. And so you'll note that I'm using things that are relatively clear in color. Not a lot of color into that. We're up to 15 drops. That'll take us to about 20. We're beginning to get kind of an amber color that's looking place in there or a little bit of a purpley color. And that's sometimes as confused as the end point and it is not. We want to go to this clearish amber color that we've seen already. And we're getting closer. That's 25 drops I believe if I'm keeping track.
And that'll take us to about 40. And we're getting close, so I'm going to cheat here a little bit and just kind of add a few more drops in. Just so that we can kind of save a bit of time at this point. And we're very close to our end point there. And we're going to say that that's our end point. It doesn't match exactly what we had before because obviously the orange juice has a bit of color to it that the vitamin C didn't. And we're going to call that Victoria about 50 drops that it took to match the fresh orange juice. Next we're going to go to Gatorade. Lemon lime Gatorade used by many athletes and others as a fluid supplement replacement. And so certainly lemon lime Gatorade should be very healthy for us. And so let's see where we go with this. And so we'll start by adding in a few drops. And we've got about 20 drops there. And we'll stop and stir. And a bit of change taking place. We'll add a bit more. That's about 20 more drops, so we're up to about 40 drops. And that was what it took to change the dichloroindophenol with the standard vitamin C solution. Now we're at the same point as the fresh orange juice, and we're still getting no color change. So I'm going to jump ahead here, and we're just going to put a whole pipette full, which is about five milliliters of this in here. And we'll do another one. While Gatorade may have a lot of health benefits, we note that it does not have any vitamin C content, or at least very little amounts of vitamin C content, because we've essentially put in many, 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 many drops. So we're going to put 100 drops plus Victoria on that, and certainly know that we're well over that point with the, with the Gatorade. So while Gatorade has lemon-lime flavor, it really has no vitamin C coming from that process. Now let's take a look at some pineapple juice. Does pineapple juice have vitamin C in it or not? That's something that the students wouldn't necessarily expect. Now we know that we drink orange juice for vitamin C. So we've put in 10 drops. Let me clean my stirring rod here. We've got a little change. That brings us to 10 drops total of juice that we've added. And we're beginning to see some color change at this point. So indicating that there is at least some vitamin C in the pineapple juice. This brings us to 15 drops. And still not to our end point. Not quite there yet. The students don't know what to expect with the pineapple juice. Does it or does it not have vitamin C content in it? That brings us to, I believe, around 40 drops that we've added. And we're seeing some color change here, but not as much as the fresh orange juice, nor as much as the standard vitamin C. And that would take us to 50 drops. And we're getting fairly close to that end point with the pineapple juice. We'll add five more drops and call it good at that point. And we've reached our end point there. Now it's not very exciting watching drops get counted, 
But the beauty of this lab is that students can do a simple titration by counting drops and understanding that there's a difference in the amount of vitamin C that different types of juices would supply to them. You can use a variety of beverages. Uh, you could try something like lemon lime Sprite. You could try the Gatorade. You can use pineapple juice. You could use juices like Sunny Delight or compare different types of juices. You might try apple juice. But as the teacher, I would recommend that you be very careful because sometimes you will find that the juices have been fortified artificially with vitamin C to add nutritional value to them. So you could buy apple juice, and apples don't have a high vitamin C content, but you will often find that the apple juice has been fortified with the vitamin C, so watch carefully for that process. This is a nice lab. You can use it qualitatively just by counting drops and comparing. So as we see over here on the, on the board that Victoria's done for us, that Gatorade has very little vitamin C content. Then next we would say that pineapple had the le next least amount. The fresh orange juice then had the most of the three juices that we compared today in comparison to our vitamin C standard that we worked with. The documentation that accompanies this will show you how you can do the mathematics and actually calculate the actual amount of vitamin C in terms of milligrams per milliliter that would be present in the juices if you require that for your courses. So vitamin C, titration with dichloroendophenol.